now the 6th of February <laughs> and this is Amley Court. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Look at these dogs in my room. I wonder if I can... Because I thought you'd be sleeping. Or oh, you'd take some good uh, photographs of the... <laughs> I have Thank done you. so. No, no. Stills for your insurance company. Because you can make them pay for that. This was your friend last night, Stuart. Have you spoken to him? The last night I... Council tractor tried to turn round on this lawn and uh, it's ruined it. It's been in flood like this for now for three days, getting higher every day, but last night it seemed to have stabilised. Front garden, now the back garden. Wet. Sunbathing corner. The seat seems to have floated off. Where is it gone? There it is. It's been rising every day now. Last night it seemed to stabilise. We haven't had rain for three days, but the forecast rain this afternoon. Now, as far as I can see, I've got about uh, eight inches before it comes into my house. Slight worry. The weir, apparently all the tackle's drawn. Everything is going through as fast as possible, and it's still not clearing the, the uh, land. Some uh, tractor thing is about the only method of transport which is available now. So, this guy's obviously got the same idea as me. The has got a bit of a problem actually. You see that, yeah, give me in focus first. He um, hasn't got any toilet grounds. He can't get out to use a toilet or hunt. Blackie! Hey baby, What's, what do you think of it so far? You see, he's got this little bit of ground here, which is underwater. He can't go there, he can't hunt, doesn't know what to make of it really. It's uh, Ambry Lake. It's about the quarter to three. I'm just going to go walk about, or I should about in the dinghy. It's uh, Ambry Court, it's heavily flooded. This one means to transport the car. Unfortunately, I can't get out of the garage. Far, far too wet, too deep. Okay, okay walk about. Now you see the houses are still built pretty high. The whole of Cool Road, in fact, is. Uh, which is then quite a fact underwater. Not the river, by the way, it's the uh, road. It's actually Court Road. Court Road on the date now, February the 6th, at about 3.30. Somebody else has got the same idea as me with the um, dinghies and mode of transport. Gotta be careful of the fact there's actually a rapid here. You can see this. I'm, I'm, um, I am just now going to go through this. Here we go. Oh, bloody hell. Way up the dee 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 dee. 
<laughs> this is in fact the main road. This is Mel Cookham Road. Bloody hell. Fun, isn't it? I don't actually want to go this way. The thing is taking me. Somehow I'm trying to get back again. Ah, oh, hell. Just not deep enough to use an outboard. Or maybe it is, I'm not sure. I should row over there and turn what's happening. Cook and Road. Great fun. I started to start filming and got, oh, I got stuck in that rapid. It's incredible, I just couldn't row against it. Well, not on film as well. Very, very, very strong there. This normally is a very fast road. Double yellow lines, traffic and everything else. It's now a river. And they're pretty wet now. <laughs> I think this sign actually says it all really. Poor buggers, they're uh, I think underwater now. the first bit of dry land. Of course the river suddenly drops and then we have the system. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he makes it. I'm not sure what vehicle that is but he seems to be very low. Very interesting. I'm pushing one hell of a bow wave in front of me, so I might only get wet. It's a bit silly, should slow down a bit. I think he's panicking. He's there, he's like, oh, yeah. oh, he's made it. If he can make it, I can make it. Get the jet ski out, slow some of it in. New development, the first thing they heard about the uh, flood plan. I hate to actually live in here. Well, you, know, you can live in here now. Jesus. We must be a good few feet deep now. Moving now, the uh, tractors, they're uh, using the very people, my dinghy, and the sandbags. Oh, I think it's a bit deep. Oh dear, oh dear. He's not going to make it. I've always got to make it. I must have the engine now. Transport we have this week. Nice to stop for you, wasn't it? Very nice. I thought it was Smile! Yeah, lovely. That's why the only thing is moving on the court road. It's just too deep for anything else. Yeah. Well, it's even deeper down our drive. But it is going down. It's dropped an inch this morning. Go by, we'll see you. Okay. As the man just said, they were going to build a swimming pool in that block to keep more attractive for all the purchases. 
guy on the left is actually from the uh, made an avatar of local paper, printed photographs. What he was worried about, it's dropped an inch uh, since this morning, is that it uh, rains forecast, very heavy rain. You can see the cloud building up now. If we get a heavy rain now, how is going to happen? The heavy rain is well on its way and we can see it coming on the satellite picture taken this afternoon. Now the band of cloud out in the North Sea, that was the rain earlier on, but then there's been bands of showers coming through behind and there's no respite. It's this big bulge of cloud down in the southwest. That's going to bring us the heavier rain later on tonight. Happened the bloody rapids again. I can't make it. Oh, I'll suck it. I'll get my feet wet and tow it. It's horrible and cold and fed up. This is not nice. Right. I should try to wave because the stream is very strong. It's very wet and very cold. And I'm getting slowly, absolutely, totally fed up. From me, I'm trying to get back in it again. Right, Jack, come on, come back. It's now the seventh this the evening. I've never known conditions quite like this in the Thames. Incredible. It's uh, very, very windy. The river's really wild. I took the dinghy out. The reason being that uh, my jetty. During the night, Drakeford dragged and smashed the jetty. She ended up coming round here and then she tried to get through the fence. She was actually on the towpath. So I've actually moved her over there. Focus, uh, over there. I hope she's okay. Forecast 90 mile an hour winds tonight. And I've just been across to get the Get some clothing off the boat. The wind caught a gun, the dinghy. I thought she was going to flip over. It really is dangerous. Here, the wind. What's left of it? Normal, peaceful, tranquil Thames. I don't know if you've seen this film. If you've seen this film, it's, uh, that is a very, very strong current going down. You can never row against it, certainly. Although the water levels are gradually receding, it's going to be months before life returns to normal for many residents whose homes are still underwater. Riz Khan has spent a day with the people of Bolter's Lock to see how they're coping with the worst flooding for 40 years. What time does the tractor come this morning? The first one was there by 10 to 7, so there should be one. Fairly soon. Breakfast in the Diamond household is still a pretty normal affair. It's just that Tony Diamond has had to add some rubber footwear and another form of transport to his normal car and train commute into London. Fortunately, this morning the tractor and open trailer has been replaced by a warm covered Land Rover, thanks to a drop in the water level. But as his wife, Judith, explains, they still feel like they're marooned on a little island. Our house is one of the newest ones around um, this particular area and they are built above the 47 flood level, so the house itself hasn't flooded. Um, but our neighbours, as you can see, are um, very badly affected. Um, immediately opposite, um, they had to evacuate over a week ago, and um, one of the other neighbours evacuated in the middle of the week when the flood was at its peak. Uh, have, have you noticed any sort of um, difference in the community atmosphere here since the flooding? Oh, yes. There's been a great community spirit, I think, and also we've seen neighbours that we didn't even know lived down here. Um, so it's, yes, it has a positive side as well. From a child's point of view, the water on the road is no big deal. Maybe a little obstructive at times. 
but even that can be turned around to an advantage with a little help from friends. I've been able to get out, and if I want to get my trousers wet, <laughs> yeah, I'd be, yes, I've been getting out. The flooding affected different properties in different ways. Many people are still trying to remove water from the inside, even though the level has dropped many inches. We didn't abandon the place, we, we stuck it out. But um, it's quite, been quite difficult cooking, and all the heating's been off because the boiler um, was underwater. And um, it's not been very pleasant sitting in the freezing cold for a week. It's been quite difficult um, because the water's been up, up to my knees, um, so I haven't been able to, able to wear my wellies. So I've been um, either wearing a short skirt or, or pulling my trousers up to my thighs and uh, wading through in a pair of flip-flops to my car. A very cold option. Still, the easier shopping route for some Riverside residents is on the main body of the water itself. At one stage, the Thames was on red alert from Wallingford in Oxfordshire to Teddington, west of London. Some other areas were on amber alert. But without doubt, the most dramatic flooding was in the Maidenhead area. The water breached more than 200 homes and marooned many more. Chris Southwood sold up his business in Highgate in London to live by the river, but never expected to row up his garden in a dinghy. My car is a mile away, and I get to the car by dinghy, then the continue the journey by car. I'm using it for everything. I've got to go to town later on again today to pick up some mail because the post aren't delivering. Um, OK, people have had it worse than me, but this is not fun. It's getting boring now. It's a week of it. Boats play an important part in his life, and despite the flood, he wouldn't consider moving away from the river. In fact, there's very few of the people affected here who would think of leaving. They feel that at the end of the day, they should take both the pros and the cons of being near the Thames. A proposed multi-million pound flood relief scheme should stop this happening again. But the people around Maidenhead now will take some time to forget how the 1990s began for them. Putting a brave face on what must be an awful situation, you have our sympathy. You won't believe this. This is about four weeks later. <clears throat> it's actually March the 17th. March the 17th, 1990. It's hot. River's placid. I brought the boat back. The jet is mended. Like coming straight back into summer. From violent floods right through. Sunshine, heat.